In this video, we're going to be covering what atomic design is and how you can use it in your pattern library. Now, atomic design was pioneered by Brad Frost in 2013 in his book, Atomic Design. Atomic design was a really interesting subject to me. Uh, I learned it on my undergraduate course at Solent University, and it completely changed the way that I approach modern website design and development in the sense of how I approach it in a modular structure. Now, atomic design, when used correctly, is very beneficial because it helps break down large components into really small, easy to build parts, which you can use to build larger structures. So to get started, the first principle is atoms. Now, atoms you can think of as really basic HTML elements or in web design, really basic sort of text components or interactive components. So this could be a link or a button or a heading or a paragraph or a list item. Um, so when you think about it, they're really small bite-sized pieces of a page that you would often see used in a group. And when you see them used in a group, this is something called a molecule. So a molecule example could be a navigation list. So a navigation list will have several anchor tags that when you combine together, make a grouped structure. So this is made up by combining several atoms to make a molecule. So that's atoms and molecules. The third concept is organisms, which can be made up of a combination of molecules or molecules and atoms. So one example could be a footer. A footer normally has several navigation lists. So you have several molecules and then you might have a social media navigation list, which is separate to a text navigation list, but is still a molecule. And by combining all of these, you get a footer organism. Um, another example could be a header organism. So this would be made up of traditionally a navigation list on the right hand side and a logo on the left hand side. And this common pattern um, is made up of an atom, which is the logo, and then a molecule, which is the navigation list. And by combining the two, you get a larger group, which is the header. And most pages or templates are made up of several organisms. Um, these are sort of in my head, a section or a predefined slice of a page that you can build together with ease and reorder, and it's not too much of a pain. Um, and then within these organisms, you have molecules and atoms that live. Now, the fourth um, structure is the concept of templates. So a template would be a common page pattern that you would come across. So this could be like a blog post where you'd expect every blog post to follow a similar pattern to one another to build consistency and to let the user know that they're on the correct website and they haven't gone to a different web page or website um, domain, or you could have a product as a, to put like a page template. Um, you'd expect every product to follow the same sort of convention, the same sort of components would be involved, and it would create consistency across the website. But then the final concept is pages, which is where you build unique um, page layouts, which aren't applicable um, to other pages on the website or a very sort of specialist. So you could think of this as a, a login page. You wouldn't expect many pages on your website to look like your login page because it will just be a login form, maybe the header and footer organisms, but you wouldn't really have any other components on the page, maybe a contact form or a register button. Um, but that, that page would be very unique and it wouldn't fall into the category of templates because unless your application has several login pages, you'll only have a one-off login page design. So those are the five design principles or atomic design principles that Brad Frost uh, pioneered, and I think they're amazing. But I do feel like there's still a little bit of room for improvement or that the principles don't kind of cater for every single component you might have within your pattern library. Now, when I was working as a freelancer, on-site at an agency in Bournemouth called Mad River. 
I was working quite close with a developer called Brandon Hawks, who introduced me to this concept of particles. Now, particles in my eyes on the project we were on was kind of just a miscellaneous folder for us to put um, non-visual components into. But as I've brought it into my own sort of workflow, it's come in as a logical um, folder or a logical concept. So if you have a component like an SEO component in React, you would use React Helmet to generate HTML head tags. But HTML head tags don't have anything visual for you to see except for maybe changing the title or if you view the source code, then you'll see the changes. So this is still a logical component, but doesn't have any visual rep representation. Um, but I still want to include it in my Atomic design bundle because it still fits in with my components. So that's where particles kind of come into it. Um, particles could be an SEO component, a high order component, which passes down prop values. It could be an application wrapper for state or for context, or for if you're using a CSS and JavaScript library like um, start components, we would use a theme provider um, as a particle and wrap our components in it. So that's kind of where particles come into it. And I know it's a bit of a new concept to introduce into the series, but I think it's really great to use when you're in the context of a React environment. So now that we covered all of the atomic design principles that Brad Frost and Brandon introduced myself to, uh, we, can, we can continue with the series. Uh, I just wanted to make sure we we're all on the same page as to what atomic design was. And if you see me using particles that you are aware of why I'm using them and how they can be used. And now we can go ahead and start building our components.